Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and Happy New Year's. I hope that you all had a very safe New Year's Eve last night and that you enjoyed your time, whether it have been with friends or family. I have a Durham Rescue Mission Thrift Haul to share with you and it's not only from their bins location, but one or two of uh, their regular retail thrift store locations. And I have some really big news to share with you. So I'm going to go ahead and get started, share that news with you, and then share with you everything that I picked up at the Durham Rescue Mission. Before I share my thrift haul with you, let me tell you the news that I have. I have decided to change the name of my YouTube channel from a work in progress to Bat Thrift Crazy. I really love the play on words with it, and I think that it tells you really more about what my channel is all about, and that is thrifting. Whether it's thrifting for myself, uh, friends, my home, uh, to resell, um, I am all about thrifting, and I have been for many, many years. So the next time that you see a notification come across, and you see it's from Bat Thrift Crazy, hopefully you will remember that that is me. So that is my news to share with you. Um, down below in the comments, let me know what you think of the new name, Bat Thrift Crazy. I'm gonna be working on a new logo. Um, I might get some help from my grand nephew on that, um, but that's gonna be coming. But I just wanted to let you know about the change because like I said, next video that comes out will be from Bat Thrift Crazy. So on to the thrift haul. Uh, this is not only from the bins, but also from, as I said, their retail store. Found, and this I'm probably going to give to a friend. This is one of those um, Norwex cloths. It is for, it's a hand dryer, but I thought it was, or for drying your hands rather. I thought the, the butterfly on it was super, super pretty. Now I don't know what these retail for anymore, but I would guess in the neighborhood about $20 or so. So that was a really good find. A um, couple pairs of shoes in this particular haul. And first are these Dingo cowboy boots. They are in very good condition. Um, even the bottoms don't really have a whole lot of wear on them. Now, I don't know what Dingo boots are going for on Poshmark. I'll have to do a little bit of research on them. Um, and they will have to be cleaned up a little bit with some leather cleaner, but I thought these were a really good find. And another thing I was really happy to find was a pair of Birkenstocks. And they're in very good condition. I was really happy with this. Now you can see, you know, the toe marks and all on the footbed. I'll do my best, best to clean that up, but there's no cracks here in the soles. The cork is in good condition. And I don't know, I think on these, again, I haven't done research on this particular size, but I'm guessing I could get, I don't know, maybe at least $25 to $30 on these. And the other pair of shoes, which I think is the last pair of shoes that I have to share with you. Oh, let me get the rubber band. Oh, wait, let me hold on to that rubber band because you know Lewis likes rubber bands. Um, is this pair of, I think these are Vince Camuto. Yes, these are Vince Camuto. I liked the color on these. They're purple. They have a nice clean footbed, a nice chunky heel, and they have a, all cut out, as you can see here. I think you can see it. Let me put my hand in there. Yeah, see, see that real pretty cut out design there, open toed, and then lace up the front. Just thought these were, oh, Lois, be careful. <laughs> Just thought these were a really pretty shoe. Let me put these down on the floor. There we go. And I found, I don't know where the other pair is, but I did find two pair of drumsticks. This particular set is Promark American Hickory by, it's a, does that say, wait for me. I do have my glasses here somewhere. Oh, here they are. These are by D. Ar um, Adaro. Here we go. I know nothing about drumsticks, and like I said, I'm not sure where the other pair is. 
Um, but I thought, you know, I'd go ahead and give them um, a chance and see. Uh, they are made in the USA. Then I picked up this really cool tub. This, of course, will be going away for Halloween in 2023. But I thought this would be a great tub for folks that just want to either leave candy out on their porch for the kids to pick up and, you know, just ask them to take a piece or two if they will do that. Or they could just fill this up and bring it to the door each time the little kids come for their trick-or-treat. But I thought that was a pretty good find. Um, not very much originally. It was from the Christmas tree shop and was $6.99. Lewis, you want to say Happy New Year to everyone? Here, you want to say hello to everybody? Say hi, everyone. Oh, and of course he has to bite me. Lewis, say hi to everybody. The, oh, okay, there he goes. All right. You ready? Let me put him down. Okay, come on. Down you go, bud. Okay, good boy. This I've got to put up around my neighborhood because people don't do this. It's a please clean up after your dog sign. When I saw it, I couldn't resist it. We used to have one down on a speed zone or a speed sign, a speed limit sign about maybe a half a block down from my house or a block down from my house and it disappeared. So I figured I got it at the bins. It literally cost me a couple of cents maybe. So I thought I would pick it up for the neighborhood. Then I found, I don't know how these do as far as resale goes, but I've heard that people look for these trays uh, these bamboo trays, you can see this one has a little bit of dirt over here, which I'll have to clean up. I managed to find uh, three of these. I have two more underneath some stuff here, but I thought I would give them a shot. Again, they, they're they very lightweight, so it didn't cost me very much money to go ahead and try and take a, a chance on something new. Now this shelf I picked up and we'll put away Hopefully I will be able to use it. I have asked for a larger space up at the antique mall where I am at. And they did recently have one open up. I went up and took a look at it, but it just wasn't the right space for me, even though it was larger. And, it, you know, not that I'm um, such an expert on on antique malls and booths and such, such I am learning still, but... I can tell you, at least from my perspective, if you have a booth and you're wanting to, you know, up, um, get larger space, you want to do more business, but the space they show you is you just don't feel right about it. Even though it's a larger space and that's what you want, it has to be a good fit for you. Um, this was not a good fit for me. Uh, right now, I am in a corner location, which is really, you know, it, it has its goods and its bads. I don't have any solid true walls, which is a con for it, but the pro is that I am on a corner, so it does get a lot of traffic. The new space, although being very large and it did have walls, which I want, it just didn't feel like it was in a high traffic location to me. So I passed on it. I'm still on the list for a bigger space and I will just be patient until the right space comes along. But I got this shelf in anticipation of getting that larger space. This piece right here just needs a little bit of cleanup, but other than that, it's going to be good to go. I like the blue color on this. I'm gonna leave it as is. Um, I like the chicken wire here too, and this little clip. I might just to, oh, and I just now realized that it doesn't have to be hung. You can actually just set it on a, on, um, you know, a countertop or something. So what I'm thinking about when I go to stage this piece is I might just go ahead and clip something on here, um, like maybe a recipe, an old recipe out of a book or something, or uh, a picture, a postcard, just to jazz it up a little bit and give people ideas of what they could use this piece for. Because sometimes you have to kind of help people when you have things in your booth and give them different ideas for things that not that they may not have thought about. Like some things are very like unconventional planters and you put a pop a plant in it and just give them the idea that, oh yeah, hey, I could use that as a planter. I picked these 
up just for staging um, in the booth. Now I will, when I do put these up there though, there will be a price on them because that's another little tip that I have learned is that you want to price everything in your booth because there's nothing more disappointing as a buyer, you know, when you're shopping around in an antique mall or, or something and you see a piece and you get excited about it and say, oh, I could really use this in my home only to find out that it is not for sale. And then you're just, it's, it's quite a letdown. So I don't want to let down my customers. So um, everything in my booth, I think right now, I think now, the few pieces that I did have that were not for sale have now been removed and everything in my booth, everything, all my display pieces, everything is for sale. Now, I have one very large piece that I honestly hope that no one does buy because then I'm going to have to scramble to get another large piece to replace it. That I have priced a little bit high, sort of in hopes that no one will purchase it and then I will, you know, need to find something else to replace it. So if there is something in your that you have a booth and you really don't want to sell, <laughs> price it a little bit high. And then when you have a sale or something, you know, that price will come down a little bit and then maybe it'll go at that point. Or maybe when you find something to replace it with, then you can mark the price down on it so they can move it out and bring some new things in. But anyway, these are going to be going for staging and also for sale. I think I have one, just one piece of Tupperware to share with you. And that's this piece right here. And this is the cheese keeper, I think. And I was lucky enough that it did have the tray inside of it. Um, I already do have one of these pieces, but I'm not sure that I have it up at the booth yet. So I've got to wash this up and get it up there. I uh, found brand new in the package some poker chips. I don't... Oh, yeah, these are from 1992. So these are vintage. How do you like that? That was a kind of a surprise. And then I know that there are people that collect playing cards. I found a bunch of playing cards. First, we have uh, American flag playing cards, and that's what it looks like. Uh, let me see if there is a date. Don't see a date on here, but the flag is really cool on it. And then it had they have pictures on each of the cards so this is a really cool deck of cards i think these will be great um, for fourth of july although because oh actually so will the poker chips but because they're so small and i do have a basket of sort of like um puzzles and games and that sort of thing that i have at the booth i'm going to go ahead and put these in the booth now um, just so they'll be there and hopefully will sell prior to fourth of july uh, but another pair, exactly, or another deck. Oh, these are cute. This is the fourth edition, You Might Be a Redneck. It says, uh, you might be a redneck if you think a straight flush toilet means indoor plumbing. No, I, I'm sorry. If you, if you think a straight flush means indoor plumbing. There we go. And this is from... Uh, it was manufactured by American Greeting Cards. I don't see a date on this. Let me see. Let me show you some of them in here. That's what they look like. But look at some of, oh my gosh. Like, there's the king. Oh gosh. And these, I've all count. I've counted these. Oh my gosh. The Joker. I counted all of these up at the bins to make sure that they were all there. So we are, whoop, we are good to go. That was the Jack rather. Here's the Joker, Jeff Foxworthy. So somebody I think is gonna get a real kick out of these playing cards. Oh, get that in there. Oh, oh another pair or another deck of the flag cards. These are proud to be an American. And this is from, let's see if we have a date on here. Made in the USA. Nope, I do not see a date on those. And these are 
Texas Hold'em rules included. So this is a, I don't know what this is, some kind of playing cards. I don't know if these are special playing cards or they just have the instructions on how to play that particular card game in there. That might be. But again, in all of these decks, they are all there. So we'll see how these do. There we are. That's all the playing cards. And you're going, phew, thank goodness for that. I picked up this uh, mug stand because I do have one up in my space now. However, the first one that I had up when it sold, I was in trouble because I didn't have a backup. And it took me a while to find another like mug tree like this. Uh, so I wanted to go ahead and pick this one up since I found it and all the pegs were there. I wanted to pick it up when I found it so that when the mug tree that I have in my space right now sells, I'll immediately have one that I can replace it with. And this is really cute. And I think a whole bunch of you are going to know what this is. And it is to sit your glasses on so you don't lose them. And there it is. I think it's so cute. It reminds me of those um, Easter Island um, statues that are on Easter Island. But that's what it looks like with the glasses on. I thought it was super cute. Oh, and reminder, um, if you are enjoying this video, don't forget to leave me a thumbs up so that I know that you did enjoy it. And make sure to watch through to the end of the video so you can see everything that I hauled. And then let everyone know, again, in the comment section down below what your favorite find was. Found this clock, travel clock. So I know people collect these as well. This is a really cool, different one. Um, and I, really, I honestly don't know how it works, but this dial right here turns. So it's special somehow. Uh, let's see, what does that say right there? Made in Germany. The face is plastic. It's by Kenzel, K-I-E-N-Z-L-E. -E. But I just thought it was super cool and seeing as how some folks do collect these travel clocks, I thought I would take a shot on that. Now these little guys I got at one of their retail shops. These were not from the bins, but how could I pass these little ones up? Little owl salt and pepper shakers. Now I only have a couple of salt and pepper shakers up at the space right now. And I don't, I try to remember if I actually ever sold salt and pepper shakers up there. But I know a lot of folks really love owls. So that is why I thought I would give these little guys a chance. Candle. And when YouTube gets a, like, a, like a smell of vision oh my goodness, this is so, so good. Never used. Oh my gosh. I think it's a soy candle. Yeah, it's 100% soy wax. But they don't tell you what the scent is. And I'm not sure that I know what scent this is. But the tin that it comes in is absolutely beautiful. So once somebody, you know, burns down this, no, Lewis, that is not for you. Once somebody burns down the candle in this and take out the wax and clean it out, this would make a beautiful little tin to set on a dresser or something. Oh, this is what Lewis was pawing at. This might be my favorite from today's haul. This milk glass vase. Oh my goodness, I am in love with this. It almost looks like there are petals, if you can see here, and then this really like ruffled edge here in perfect condition. Oh, it's got a leaf in it. Okay. Um, in perfect condition, of course it has to be washed out. The mark on the bottom is this, it's a C or a G with, with an arrow through it. I bet one of you guys would know what that means because I have not done any research on it yet, but I love this vase. Picked up two of these uh, Lily Pulitzer mugs. Absolutely beautiful with the writing inside here. 
and the gold on the handle. I don't know what the print is. I'm going to have to do some research and find out what the print is on this. But I found two of these in pristine condition, both of these. Oh, and this is another one of those lithopanes, I believe is what they call it. Uh, the last one I was lucky enough to sell to one of you lovely folks. And that was a like a winter scene with Santa. This one is a wedding scene. So you put the tea light candle inside there and then put that on top. And when you light up the tea light candle, it just glows beautifully through there. So if you can see, there's the husband and the wife. A little hard to see. Um, there's a carriage here. Oh, there's their wedding cake. What else is on here? Oh, another wedding cake. We have two of them. There's another wedding cake. It's just beautiful. I haven't lit it up, but I know that it's going to look just like the other one. So this would be a very lovely little, um, like a an extra shower gift or something for a, a new bride-to-be. Put that over there so I don't lose that. This, I believe, is an Avon piece. Let me pull this off real quick before I show it to you. Um, I don't know. It's not an... I don't know what made me think this was an Avon piece. Oh, okay. It's a perfume decanter anyway. Now, this is really stuck in here. I am hoping that with some hot water, I'm going to be able to expand, is that right? No, cold, yes, expand the bottom part here enough that I can wiggle this top part out. But this is going to be perfect for next month's um, booth for Valentine's Day. A beautiful piece and no chips. Let me feel it. <laughs> no, nope, no chips. That was a nice find. And with the owls again, this is actually a candle, but what a beautiful planter this would make, I think. It's high enough that it definitely can support a plant. So I'll put a little something in the sky when he goes up to the booth and see how he does. Love his orange color too. I thought that was a really fun find. This is a beautiful find. Look at this. I'm going to call it what, a dish, hand blown. It's smooth on the bottom here, blue coloring. See that beautiful blue color in there with the white, even maybe a little bit of green, gorgeous piece. And it looks as though it was kind of like pinched right here and at the edges. I love, love, love this piece. Quite heavy, have no idea who the maker is. There was no mark on it whatsoever, but I could not pass this up. I finally found, you, I don't know about in your area, but around here for me, I cannot find apothecary jars. Can't find them. Found one, finally, yay. <laughs> it's nothing special, but my idea is to fill it up um, and I've said this on a couple of occasions, I buy different kind of containers and I like to fill them up with, you know, old buttons or dominoes, dice, whatever. Um, but this one I think will be really nice with some buttons that I have um, picked up recently. And then that'll be for sale. Of course, this has to be washed because it's, it's really dirty. But finally found an apothecary jar. Yay! And a few more things to share with you. And first, let me share. I know this is over. He's going to go away for next year. But look at how cute he is. Oh my goodness. And can you believe this guy retailed? Oh my gosh. $68. $68. Um, I can't imagine any. I mean, yes, you are adorable, but I can't imagine paying $68 bucks for him. He's super, super cute. I will put him away for Christmas next year. And I think somebody is going to love him, and they won't have to pay 68 bucks for him. Finally found a Starbucks mug. Haven't found them in the longest, longest time. You, know, you go through these periods where you find Tupperware galore, and you find Starbucks galore, and Christmas galore, and then there's crickets. Well, finally found a Starbucks, and this is from Puerto Rico. This is one of the... Is this the... Um, that series where um, 
where you're at or cities or something like that. Uh, come on. Oh my goodness. Let's stick them. Oh, it doesn't say. Okay. Doesn't say. Perfect condition. No chips. I actually even wonder if it was used because there's no marks on the inside either, but I was happy to pick him up. And then the last thing that I have to show you, this is going to need just a little bit of work on it because the top, as you can see, has been broken, but I got it anyway because I just love this hanging basket. Let's see here. A little lopsided, but that's just the, because it's the way that I am holding it. But this is going to make a gorgeous piece out on somebody's deck come this spring. You could even put this, oh, a spider plant in there, all just kind of draping out. Oh, how nice that would be. Oh, I have a spot actually in my kitchen that I could put this. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to, Lois, leave those shoes alone. I'm going to uh, fix this up, clean it up a little bit, and get it up into the booth for the springtime. Perfect, perfect piece. And that, my friends, that is everything from Bat Thrift Crazy. My favorite piece, um, yep, I'm going with my original thought, and that is the milk glass vase. I just think it's gorgeous. This is my favorite piece. Again, I would love to know down below in the comment section what your favorite find was from today's haul. And also let me know what you think of my new channel name, Bat Thrift Crazy. And don't forget, next time you see me, that's what you're going to see me under. So again, I hope you had a wonderful New Year's and I hope that 2023 just brings you everything, everything that you deserve. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I'll see you in my next video. And don't forget, take very, very good care of yourselves. Bye for now.